and sometimes you pay a little bit more at what they call it coffee money here but it really help you speed up the process because as a foreigner we all have this fear that one day they will come and they'll take it all away and there's literally nothing we can do about it who's they of uh, the government hi everyone how's it going i'm sky today we're going to meet with a vietnamese american business owner on what it's like running a business in vietnam if you like to see more interviews of locals and foreigners in vietnam hit the subscribe button join my youtube memberships and let's get started here please introduce yourself hi my name is van i'm originally from california been living in here in vietnam for about six years now i was actually born in this very house i left to california when i was about eight years old pretty much grew up there my whole life since about six years ago finally made the jump back. And what was it like growing up in the U.S. after living in Vietnam? I was eight, so I was pretty quick to adapt to the environment. It was hard like most family as first generation in America. Mom worked two jobs, dad worked as well. I was the kid that kind of pretty much followed mom everywhere to every kitchen, every cafe, and sit there with peeled garlic and do all the kind of food things that no one kind of want to do. The little helper. Yeah, the little helper, I would say. At first, I kind of hated it. But as it progressed, I've learned a lot, especially in the kitchen, I'm quite handy. We are at your restaurant where you were born. Can you share the story about how the house you were born in turned into a restaurant? This is actually my second restaurant. The first restaurant was in Fukuok. We did a California and Tex-Mex kind of bar. We were like kind of the biggest craft beer bar on the island. Really great vibe. First two years was wow, hard. Being into a new environment after kind of educating the market and the people of the quality in food and um, craft beer. Eventually we rise to kind of top 10 on, on Google and TripAdvisor. We were on our way of being pretty successful, I would say. And then of course COVID hit. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. kind of hard, but it taught me, like my mom, gotta be resilient, fight through everything that you want, back onto the journey. I wanted to do something that's kind of meaningful, so I opened up often. It's basically named after my mom. The food we do here is, some of it is her traditional recipe, and then some of it is kind of like modern cuisine that I put a little science in. But she's been selling the noodle here for like 30, 40 years before we went to America. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back to kind of continue the tradition. Hopefully we one day we can build the bridge from here to California. And what were you doing in the US? Long story short, basically in food and beverage industry. But my last job was, I'm quite prideful of it, just because I was one of the few chefs that actually gets to open up um, the Cafe Max for Apple, the phone company. Our team is pretty cool because uh, we would take over a building and we would build four 15 station and each station would have like different cuisine. So I was able to learn a lot mm -hmm. as well as being able to share Vietnamese cuisine. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to have a greater outlook on food. So I wanted to bring back the different outlook as well as the food sanitation to Vietnam because we have great food here, but sometimes a little sketchy. <laughs> With the sanitation? <laughs> yeah. Sure. What would you recommend someone if it's their first time at your restaurant? What we do here is kind of um, a unique thing because we have traditional recipes just like ban bok lao, something that is very handmade. Mom and I have been making this since I was about seven or eight years old. been doing this my whole life. And then we also have like newer things like bánh bèo chén, thang chè, which is bamboo charcoal with a little bit of rice flour. And then with a little science, we mix it, we stabilize it, refine the Vietnamese food in a different light, in a more modern way. So we offer classic as well as modern food. What's the most popular dish amongst the locals and what's the most popular amongst the foreigners? Is there a difference between their taste buds or? There is, I mean, as a foreigner, like someone that's kind of intro to wine, when you first start drinking wine, you want to like, like the lighter flavor, the more uh, easy to accept. But the local is something like they've been eating a lot. So they want local want more savory food. And as a foreigner, they want more like fresh and balanced. I think Vietnamese food 
the best thing we have going for us is we have a lot of great balance from freshness to umami to sweet fermentation everything that you need in a great dish as a vet q what does it take to start a business in vietnam it takes a lot of sizing the market knowing who you want to approach and where you want to be a lot of people that first start out business even myself we make this mistake that we're like hey we have a good product people will come but in reality is not because you gotta let people know how to find your restaurant and the right target maybe food from one person might be great but the next person might not be their palate at all so finding out what demographic you want to target if it's the local or the foreign but just figuring out which market size you want to be in And I think from that, with a business plan, you're more likely to succeed than, than not sizing the market. What do you mean as in sizing the market? Sizing the market in a sense that understanding what the consumer want, what are they need in the mile radius, for example, who are their average customer, what are their spending power. When they buy something, are they looking for convenience or more for products? From there, you can kind of tell which customer is the right customer for you because I know for a fact that not every customer is the right customer for your restaurant if someone that's looking for like a very expensive place or a very affordable place we're not any of those we're in between what we sell is comfort food but with a passion. Was it difficult to find licenses and permits and all that as a VitQ starting a business here? Or did you have help with like your local family? Yes, at first I had a lot of help with my cousin. He's the one that kind of handle all that. But once I moved back to Saigon, I had to do a lot of it myself. And it's a learning curve. Everything I learned in the US of regulation and right way of doing things has to be a little bit more flexible. You're gonna have to learn how to pivot. Sometimes And the right way may take maybe months to three months longer but if you know who to reach out how to speed up the process it's actually a lot faster than me getting licensed in the US so just knowing the right person here in Vietnam speeds up the process yes and knowing what are your rights who to trust and it's definitely a learning curve but the more it information that you can ask your fellow other owners and as well as your family that's been living here the more information you gather the better it is what was your initial startup cost in starting a business in vietnam you have to figure out what type of business you want for example my restaurant is about a 35 seater with remodeling including the whole building it was around 120,000 roughly dollars yeah but if you were to do this in the US 500,000 would be pretty fast we have to scale it out and also from there we have to figure out the next six months how everything's gonna be paid for and basically the more detail oriented your business plan is the more likely you be able to survive have a chance of winning does it also include like license permits and all that the licensing and permit it actually doesn't cost that much if you actually go to the agency itself it will cost more but if you personally go do it it will cost one tenth of it however the process will be much much longer it's all about who you know right like exactly. you said and sometimes you pay a little bit more what they call it coffee money here mm -hmm. but it really help you speed up the process because every day that you're not opening you're losing money that's true it's a great mindset actually yeah how's it different running a business in vietnam versus running a business back in america where you grew up I feel like here they are some gray area, but it's actually much more of an open market because the beautiful thing about Vietnam is that anywhere, anytime, you can open up a business. Either you're in the alley, on the street, by the corner. If you have a dream and aspiration to do something, you can definitely do it. It's just 
takes planning. I think it's the key. In the U.S., you can have great plan, you can have it all thorough, but if it doesn't just meet the goal, you are kind of doomed in a way just because it will cost more to fix everything and in regulation, which is a perfectly a system. But however, being with a lot of regulation and rule, it really discourages a lot of people from opening. Also, the liability in the state is just crazy because anyone can trip and sue you, like the McDonald thing, hot coffee and sue you. I just find it kind of crazy when you open up a business, you're a small entity that try to survive and now you gotta worry all that too. You forget your passion why you want to open up in the first place and make great food, have exceptional service. What's your experience working with local vendors and suppliers here in Vietnam? Wow, okay. See, that is a great question because the vendor here is a hit and miss. Sometimes you get great quality for great price for great product but it's not very sustainable in a sense that they'll have it for six months and then their seven months they're like oh i don't have it anymore As because in, it's not in season or sometimes it's just i we can't get it anymore but in the u.s when someone promises you something you tend to have their word i mean it, it holds more value in the sense that hey i'm gonna get you a, a thousand kilo beef and thousand kilo beef will show up because I've never had problem ordering stuff at Apple but I have a lot of problem ordering like uh, meat and special ingredients here. Why do you think that is? is it, do you think it's because lack of supply or they're not consistent? I feel like it's just consistency because sometimes when they buy the product so much and then they stop buying and then the people that just don't supply them anymore or that product has been overly ordered and then everybody wants it and then no more. What they call here is Jai Hang and that happens very often. What does that mean? Running out of product but the supplier here, the main company usually are pretty good but the smaller company is a little sketchy because honestly all we have is just our word. We don't really have much of contract. I figure if one of my vendors say hey I'm not gonna sell it to you anymore and then we have an agreement they're gonna sell it to me. They can break it anytime and, and as a foreigner it's kind of hard to go after them. So here would you say it's like there's not really a system? Accountability. It's easy for anyone to start a business. There's no accountability behind that. Like one day they were like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. Bye. There you go with a vendor. Uh, and that vendor can be like the best vendor that supplies you all your seafood. And that happens pretty often. But do you think there's also multiple competition where you can... There seafood? is, but... For me, when we order stuff, quality goes the first because sometimes we get other people that give us great price, but the quality doesn't meet. The one that's losing is actually the one that's paying our bread and butter, our customer. When you treat the customer like that, how you expect them to come back? What is the biggest challenge you face running a business in Vietnam? It's probably the uncertainty. As a foreigner, we all have this fear that one day they will come and they'll take it all away and there's literally nothing we can do about it. Who's they? Uh, the government. Oh, okay. Tell us more. <laughs> But I mean like, I don't see that happening anymore just because everything is such a big social media here in Vietnam where it's not like so controlled. There's definitely more human rights than what we have a few years back. I still have that little uncertainty that maybe that could happen. I think that's why a lot of people are afraid because Vietnam is a great market. But just the fact that knowing that anything can possibly happen, this, this castle that you build can be all taken away, it's kind of terrifying. That's really scary. Is that common to happen where the government just takes a foreign business? Or... This is something I just hear my parents talk about all the time, just like families and friends. But I figure there has to be some kind of justice to that. No one randomly just come take it from you. But living in a different world, we have to adapt and accept what could happen. Or maybe the parents are, your parents are trying to scare you, like, no, come back to California. Yeah, I, I, when I first decided to move here, everybody thought I, would, I made the biggest mistake because I had such a great career, a great thing going. But um, it's something that pushed me out of my comfort zone. 
and I'm able to sit here and say that I've grew so much more than if I were to sit in California mm -hmm. and did my nine to five. How would you say you grew more? My perspective, my way of looking at life. I think I would have achieved everything I wanted in a goal of becoming, you know, well off if I were to stay in California. But I don't think that my uh, mental health would be as great as I am right now. There's a saying that it's not what you eat, it's who you eat with. And I think that regardless of rich or poor but if you live like you are wealthy and happiness there's nothing that's greater than that what would you do differently now if you were to start a business again I would actually plan even more thorough than I am now with more knowledge that I gain I feel like the next business I would definitely have partners you're doing this all by yourself yes from every tile from every glassware from every straw every single thing in this restaurant I handpicked and I feel like that was so much work which I love but a little bit older now I would love to like have more time with the family so I would love to just focus on my expert which is cooking developing research and development which you know something I kind of did before as well and have the more hands-to-hand -hand day for like a uh, manager in that sense of finding the right key people to be in the right role what's the biggest lesson you've learned in running a business in Vietnam never think your perspective is right you might have a lot of experience but there is much much more that anyone can teach you that's why I respect the people that's cleaning from the cleaning lady all the way to people that service us they all have some value to teach us like for example one of our cleaning lady at Apple she was the most efficient worker ever and it's because she used a lot of her experience and she taught us stuff in the kitchen as chef been working 20 30 40 years still haven't known those tricks if we're open-minded we're able to embrace much much more what would you say are the biggest key factors in having a successful business in Vietnam the key factor of successful is you what do you determine is successful? Is it income driven or is it experience driven? In both of those, I feel like you need a balance. You can't prolong your business if you don't make any money. You can't prolong your passion to create more opportunity if you don't make anything. If you make it enough money where you can pay yourself, pay your staff, you're creating something that's quite valuable. You're creating opportunity for your society. To me, I feel that is my success. If you made it this far, thanks very much for watching. What did you think? If you'd like to continue seeing more interviews of locals and foreigners in Vietnam, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support my channel, join my YouTube memberships. And until then, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.